Hello fellow pioneers and welcome to my guide on creating a battery factory. A battery factory you say? Why would you need a battery factory? Well let's have a look in the hub. In the hub the aeronautical engineering milestone in tier 7 is what provides drones and drone ports and that also means batteries come along and are made available at this level including sulfuric acid which is another part of the battery production process. The drones themselves require batteries for their fuel and they refuel at the drone ports themselves. It only needs to be batteries supplied at one end for it to work. We will go into drones and the full drone mechanics in another tutorial but this is going to be a video all about creating a battery factory. So you will have sufficient batteries for all of the drones that you wish to use. Simply select the milestone, fill it with all the required inventory items that you need. And press the big red button. If we have a look in our codex, we can look up battery and batteries require sulfuric acid, alumina solution and aluminum casing. And they produce the batteries and also water as a byproduct. We've chosen this location here on the East Swamp because it has an abundance of bauxite that we need for this build for our lumina. There is a sulfur node just here. We've got water here. All we need to do is bring in coal, which we're going to drone in from over that way. And also we need to bring in quartz, which is up on that ridge. Now, when I say we're going to drone in, how can we drone it in if we don't have batteries made yet? I'll show you a little technique to help kickstart that setup. Here we are at the Eastern Swamp, the location of the battery facility I've created. This time around, I've decided to make nine blenders making batteries. This does require me to use two nodes of bauxite, which are here at this location. Normally, you've seen me use the Pioneer First method, and I only make what I need. However, for drones, you need a nice healthy supply of batteries. So if you're going to set up a battery factory, you may as well invest a little bit more time in it and make probably more than you're ever going to need. That's why I've gone for this setup. Once again, I've done some logistics that have one-to-one -one ratios. The nine blenders required nine sulfuric acid refineries. Now, I didn't need nine water extractors to feed the nine sulfuric acid refineries. However, underclocking them and aligning them this way made for some very simple one-to-one -one logistics. I didn't need to merge a few water extractors together and then split them out. It adds extra pipe work laying and logistics planning. You can see here they just run straight from one machine to the next. The blenders have an output of excess water that needs to be dealt with. Over in the distance there you can see there is a bunch of coal generators. That's how we're going to deal with the byproduct of that water. We're not feeding it back into the loop. Why? It's just extra work. In particular the batteries are going to be used by the drones that are supplying the materials to the uranium and plutonium fuel rod processes and also to the nuclear power plants for the uranium fuel rods and the uranium waste going to the plutonium process. So by using a feedback loop and the potential of that feedback loop stalling because it's incorrectly configured or something unknown happened, that would cease your battery production, which then would cease the drones from being able to operate, seems like a bit of a risk. Whereas I could just sink that excess water using coal generators and some coal and problem solved. That concludes part one of the battery factory. Stay tuned for part two, where we will finish going over the build, 
before we power it on and also we'll show you how the drones are set up at the sending end. Don't forget to check out the Satisfactory Guru website. It's got lots of articles that are full of tips and tricks to help you get the most from your satisfactory journey. Thank you very much.